This prize, valued at $120, is the perfect complement to a Coleman Spa. A Coleman Spa offers relaxation the whole family can enjoy. And you'll enjoy your Wheel Deal gift package from Waterworld. To win, watch Wheel of Fortune weeknights at 6.30. When you see the Wheel Deal on your screen, be the 13th caller with the right answer. Watch Wheel of Fortune on TV 13 and win. As promised, here are preliminary results from our in-touch line. The question, does Bill Clinton have the character to be president? 35% of those calling say yes, 65% say no. And it's not too late to participate. All you have to do is call 246-5600. This then press in category 8000, and we'll have more results coming up tonight at 6. Time now to get a preview of the news at 6 with John in the newsroom. Thank you, Lori. Uh, cracking down on gay bashing. Des Moines police and the gay and lesbian community combining forces to educate the public on that. Well, Authorities in Indianola trying to determine if a pellet gun incident was a drive-by shooting. We'll have these stories the rest of the news in one half hour. Thanks, John. And finally tonight, did you know that today is National Read Aloud Day? President Bush marked the occasion with a visit to a parochial school on Capitol Hill. Mr. Bush read Harry the Dirty Dog to 27 first graders. Now, he also talked a little bit about some comments of the White House dogs, Millie and Ranger. He then threw open the floor to answer many questions. And I understand the kids had a lot of questions about Millie. I'm sure After all, were. Millie's written a uh, book, oh, that's right? right. So. I'm sure they would have a lot of questions about <laughs> Millie. Coming up on uh, tomorrow's Live at Five, a special visit from NBC's wacky weather guy, Willard Scott. He's coming to Des Moines to take part in the Orchard Place auction at Capitol Square. Time now for NBC Nightly News with Tom Brokaw. Blood transfusion. Tennis great Arthur Ashe reluctantly acknowledges he has AIDS. Yasser Arafat, the great survivor, escapes death in a plane crash. And Bill Clinton, now way out front, he goes on to the Caterpillar strike. This is NBC Nightly News with Tom Brokaw, reporting tonight from NBC News headquarters in New York. Good evening. For some time now, a small circle of his friends and New York doctors have known that Arthur Ashe has AIDS, but they protected his privacy. Today, however... He was forced to go public when USA Today, the newspaper, learned of his condition. At a crowded news conference, the former tennis champion described how he contracted the virus during surgery for a defective heart. It was transmitted through a blood transfusion after one of my open heart bypass operations. In all likelihood, the second operation in 1983. I have known since the time of my brain operation in September 1988 that I have AIDS. So, some people may ask, why not go public earlier? The answer to me and my family was simple. Any admission of HIV infection at that time would have seriously, permanently, and my wife and I firmly believe, unnecessarily fringed upon our family's right to privacy. Ash spoke with emotion at one point, talking about the effect of all of this on their five-year-old daughter. His wife, Jeannie, had to take over. Camera already knows that perfect strangers come up to Daddy on the street and say hi. Even though we've begun preparing camera for this news, beginning tonight, Arthur and I must teach her how to react to new, different, and sometimes cruel comments that have very little to do with her reality. Particularly for the sake of our family, Jeannie and I and some close friends have often talked about how long <coughs> we could conceal this secret. Then sometime last week, someone phoned USA Today and told the paper. And Arthur Ash joins me now. Arthur, you are a public hero, but you are a very private man. You are obviously worried that this might get out in some fashion. Now that it has, however angry that may make you, isn't there a possibility of a greater good here? Oh yes, there was always the possibility, Tom, that I could use whatever means I could, as Magic Johnson has and some others before me, to further the knowledge and educate the public more about this. But I'm still angry that uh, something I considered private, uh, certainly uh, our family wanted to keep it that way, was not uh, 
my volition to keep private. I was forced to go public today. Will you become an activist? Oh, I certainly will, uh, but I'm not going to drop everything else that I do and just concentrate on AIDS. I've been an activist all my life. Maybe the better question is, will you continue to be an activist? And I certainly will, and I look forward to doing some things. In fact, mentioned it to uh, President Bush on the phone today. Uh, when you had open heart surgery in 1983, and that seems like the likely time that you may have contracted it through blood transfusions, were you even aware of the AIDS virus at that time, or of AIDS? Oh, yes. I was... Uh, quite aware of um, the possibility. I even thought about it in the aftermath of the transfusions I received, but didn't pay too much attention to it until I remember reading in the New York Times here in the city that there was a window within which a lot of transfusions contained tainted blood. I didn't think too much of it, though, until September of 88 when I found out that uh, I indeed had gotten one or two bad units of blood. You were infected for several years before you were aware of that. Uh, your wife, Jeannie, is HIV negative. Does that tell the doctor something about transmission of this virus and about AIDS? Uh, we've talked about that. Um, yes, you can't be very definitive about it, but it certainly, does, it certainly leads one to believe that it is not always transmitted heterosexually. You're on a very heavy medication schedule based on what oh, I heard yes. you describe very, here today. Yes. And you say that you're feeling pretty good most days, but a half a day out of six you don't feel so good. Is that a result of a condition or of the medication? Uh, I think it's a, probably a combination of both. The, um, the standard medication, AZT, which I tolerate very well, is quite toxic. And some reports think that in time uh, the AZT loses its potency. I've been able, and I feel lucky to have tolerated as well as I do, but I think it's a combination of the disease and possibly the 20,000 worth of medicines that I have to take every year. You've already heard from President Bush, and the White House has now announced that tomorrow they'll make a, still another announcement that they will be freeing up more experimental drugs. Maybe you're having an impact already. Well, certainly, I may have been an, an added incentive, but uh, certainly this is something that needs to be uh, dealt with a bit more aggressively, and I think the President's moving to do that. You're 48 years old. You have a five-year-old daughter. I'll be around a little longer. <laughs> How do you talk to her about it? Uh, we're going to start in about an hour. Uh, but as you and I talk, she doesn't know a thing. Arthur, it goes without saying, personally, and I know that I speak for everyone else, we wish you only the very best. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you very much for coming by tonight. And NBC's chief medical correspondent, Robert Bazell, also is with us tonight to describe the risk of contracting AIDS now as a result of blood transfusions. Robert? Well, the key to the answer to that question, Tom, is that Arthur Ashe was infected before the AIDS blood test was developed. Since that time, the blood supply has gotten much safer. Since the spring of 1985, every unit of blood donated in the United States has been routinely tested for the AIDS virus. But in the late 1970s and early 80s, before the test was possible, the blood supply was dangerous. Vivian Howard, like Arthur Ashe, is one of the almost 5,000 Americans who got infected through a transfusion at that time. In the beginning, I thought I was only going to last a couple of months, and I was angry, and I was mad at the world, and I cried a great deal. People can remain without mm -hmm. symptoms for up to 10 years after they get infected mm -hmm. with HIV. And even after AIDS develops, people often live for many years. For people getting blood transfusions nowadays, the risk is much less than it was before the test was in place. But it is not zero. In spite of all the testing, there still is a chance that a rare person will receive blood that is infected for the AIDS virus that couldn't be prevented by the current tests. The problem is that among potential donors, there is a period of a few weeks to a few months from the time a person is infected with HIV until his or her blood tests positive. In the seven years since the AIDS blood testing began, federal health officials have confirmed 20 cases of HIV infection through blood transfusion in the United States. Officials estimate that the risk of getting the AIDS virus from a blood transfusion today is 1 in 225,000 for each unit of blood. To avoid even that tiny risk, many doctors recommend that people store their own blood when they can before elective surgery. But often surgery is performed in an emergency or when people are too sick to store their own blood. So donated blood will always be a crucial part of medical care. Tom? Thank you, Robert. And when Nightly News continues in a moment, the many lives of Yasser Arafat. First pictures of the PLO chief after the plane crash.
risk. As hard as it is to live with, it's impossible to live without. At Merrill Lynch, we know that risk can be dealt with. It can be managed. It can even be turned to your advantage. To do that, you need a partner. A partner who understands it and can help you turn a world of risk into a world of opportunity. Merrill Lynch, we are bullish on the future. Why cook in oil, margarine, or butter? All natural Pam adds only one-tenth the fat and calories and keeps food light and delicious. Pam cooking spray, because how you cook is as important as what you cook. It's not a perfect world. Even pantyhose could stand some improvement. Presenting no nonsense with a unique stay flat waistband that doesn't roll down or bind. It's something other pantyhose just don't have. No nonsense, beautifully put together. It is now confirmed PLO Chairman Yasser Arafat is alive following Tuesday's plane crash in the Libyan desert. He arrived today in the city of Misrata, some 12 hours after a French satellite, not an American satellite as first reported, picked up distress signals from the wreckage. More from NBC's Martin Fletcher. He survived yet again, with more cuts and bruises than the PLO first admitted. Nevertheless, Yasser Arafat was brought from the desert crash to a Libyan hospital and a warm welcome from Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi. News that Arafat survived the crash landing in a sandstorm brought joy to the occupied territories. In small groups in several towns, they celebrated yet another victory over death by the man they call the great survivor. That's very good. Uh, he is a good man and we love him. Israeli troops broke up the demonstrations, wounding 15 Palestinians. You can sense the excitement mounting here. There was joy at Arafat's survival, but it was a pretty muted form of celebration. If anything, Arafat's near miss highlights how fragile an organization the PLO is becoming. PLO supporters are increasingly turning to the Islamic fundamentalists who reject all compromise with Israel. Off camera today, they said they'd like to see Arafat dead. The PLO could break up and many Palestinians would become more radical, join the fundamentalists. Much of the dissatisfaction with the PLO stems from the peace process, or the lack of it. And the lack of an obvious successor to Arafat shows how much of a one-man organization the PLO really is. So he's, not, he's not a great leader as such, but he has been uh, a, an enormous unifying force. And his singular achievement has been that he's kept the word Palestine from disappearing from the map. Uh, and in rallies to support Arafat tonight, the message was clear. Yasser Arafat is more than just the leader of the PLO. He is the PLO. The question raised today is, how long could Palestinian unity survive without him? Martin Fletcher, NBC News, Jerusalem. In American politics, Bill Clinton countered his victories and bandaged his political wounds today after sweeping Tuesday's primaries. Now within reach of the Democratic nomination, Clinton fights on today on the front lines of a bitter Illinois labor dispute. NBC's Andrea Mitchell tonight. For Clinton, jumping into the ugly caterpillar strike was a chance to position himself as the de facto nominee and contrast himself with George Bush. Clinton plunged into a crowd of workers who began to be replaced this week. I'm here today because they should not be permanently replaced for exercising their legal right to strike. And we cannot protect that right until there's a change in the presidency. Clinton supports pending legislation that would prevent companies like Caterpillar from replacing strikers, legislation Bush has promised to veto. Although Clinton also met briefly with management, his pitch to labor was time to appeal to the big union vote two weeks from now in Pennsylvania, the next primary state. And what are you going to do tomorrow when all these cameras are gone to help these people keep their jobs? Most of the workers were glad to get the attention. For Clinton, it was a high-profile performance to capitalize on his latest victories. But the big win in New York had its downside. Two-thirds of the Democrats didn't want Clinton to be the nominee. Nearly half don't believe he's honest enough to be president. I'm not interested in whether they love me or not. I want them to respect me, and I want them to want me to be their president. Clinton has a huge delegate lead, two-thirds of the way to capturing the nomination. Still, Jerry Brown won't quit, even though it is now mathematically impossible for him to get the nomination. 
Brown hasn't even returned phone calls from the party chairman, who made it clear on the Today program that Jerry Brown should stop attacking Clinton. Uh, true. Uh, my wishes don't seem to be ha having a great deal of impact on, uh, on Governor Brown. I've said for a long time that, that I want our campaign to be focused on issues and not personal attacks. I think personal attacks uh, only end up uh, helping George Bush. The party is now falling in behind Clinton. The Democratic chairman is lining up endorsements for him from superdelegates, governors, and senators. And according to people who have spoken with Paul Songus, he is not likely to re-enter the race. Andrea Mitchell, NBC News, Washington. When Nightly News continues in a moment, more news and Britain's most crucial vote in a dozen years. When the doctor told me to come in right away, I was scared. Really scared. But this burning pain was real. <laughs> Boy, I gotta tell you, was I relieved when my doctor said my Lanta. He said it was heartburn. Heartburn that needed strong medicine. Mylanta is strong medicine, strongly recommended for heartburn. It's the antacid doctors recommend most. My doctor said Mylanta. In Japan, they buy a remarkable new car that comes with 7,041 miles already on it. The Honda Accord from Marysville, Ohio. The best-selling American-made car in Japan. Working your fingers to the bone? You deserve a fresh lunch. Use Ziploc brand sandwich bags with the gripper zipper. Tough, tiny teeth, you can feel gripping, so you know freshness is locked in. Mmm, my favorite. Finger sandwiches! There's only one Ziploc. Dear Thompsons, I swear by Thompsons Water Seal, but recently when it ran out, my son finished with another brand. Then it rained. What a difference. Thompsons beat it up, the other brand nothing. Thanks for a product you can believe in. Marvin Snotty, Locust Grove, Virginia. Here's a quick check now of some of today's other news from around the world. Dismantling history as more of old Central Bridge over the Ohio River came down for a century. It linked Ohio and Kentucky. The new bridge will have four lanes and cost $26 million. In the Russian parliament, Boris Yeltsin's economic reforms and his personal push for greater authority continue to meet strong resistance. There could be a no-confidence vote on Yeltsin as early as Thursday. And Joint Chiefs of Staff Chairman General Colin Powell met today with British Prime Minister John Major. On their agenda, charges that Iraq has now moved missiles across its 36th parallel. That would be a violation of the UN ceasefire agreements. In British politics, a conservative leader loses popularity to a recession, suffers by comparison to his charismatic predecessor, and faces dissent in the ranks and a polished but controversial opponent. It does sound like this country and George Bush, but it is Britain's John Major, up for re-election not seven months from now, but tomorrow. NBC's Keith Miller is in London tonight. The news headlines this morning. The politicians begin to wind up their campaigns this morning. On the last day of the national campaign, the Labour Party is poised to take power for the first time in more than a decade. The polls show Labour slightly ahead, but the race is still too close to call. Roger Hart says, like many voters, he is unhappy with the way both parties conducted their campaign. You see now they keep rocking each other and slugging each other. I don't think that's good for the country. Prime Minister John Major has on occasion looked more like a moving target than a politician. Just sort of fighting each other and I'm a bit ashamed to see the way they're doing it at the moment. Neil Kinnock! The opposition Labour leader Neil Kinnock has been scolded for adopting a slick American-style campaign. London's bookies say the smart money is going on Labour to win the election because the Conservatives have failed to end Britain's longest recession in 30 years. Businessmen and consumers have been hurt. Business failures were up 67% last year. And home repossessions jumped 72%. It's about time we had a change, I think. Yeah. We're, we're in dire straits at the moment. Still, the election is expected to be close. Many people don't believe a socialist government will make life any better. And there are many voters who will be going to the polls tomorrow, still undecided. They don't want to give John Major and the Conservatives a fourth chance at government. 
but they're not very keen at giving Neil Kinnock his first chance. If you have had enough of the election campaign by now... The British face a dilemma familiar to voters in America. They will decide who to vote against rather than who to vote for. Keith Miller, NBC News, London. On Wall Street today, prices closed down sharply. Tra trading today was very heavy. Dear Folgers, I tried the Folgers switch on three of my fellow sisters. Instead of our usual ground coffee, I made Folgers crystals. They all complimented me on the taste and aroma. You do make wonderful coffee, was repeated more than once. They never realized it was Folgers crystals. Folgers crystals, proven to surprise fresh brewed coffee drinkers. Tastily yours, Sister Mary Norbert Bauer. say our personality traits are formed at an early age. Presenting the 3.1 liter V6 Rodeo from Isuzu. The way we see it, it's never too late to have a happy childhood. I teach archery, so I always have to hit my target. Thanks to the always on target Hearts 2-in-1 team, ridding bow of fleas and ticks is easy and just as accurate. First, use Hearts 2-in-1 Rid Flea Shampoo. It kills fleas and ticks, leaving him really clean. Then a Hearts 2-in-1 collar for up to five months of long-lasting protection. The Hearts team, 2-in-1 Rid Flea Shampoo and the 2-in-1 collar. Targets and kills your pet's fleas and ticks. They really work. Hearts, everything good for your pet. How bad are your allergies? Terrible. Terrible allergy attack? I feel like I just want to unscrew my head, take it off. Suppose I took your Benadryl away. I'd be home in bed. Would you try this new allergy medicine? Does it work the same? Dristan Allergy has a decongestant, and this Benadryl doesn't. So it relieves nasal congestion and pressure Benadryl can't. Let's try it. Okay. What? I feel fantastic. What? I can breathe through my nose. I don't need a tissue anymore. <laughs> new Dristan Allergy. Dristan, the face of relief today. Colorado Senator Tim Worth made it official today, becoming the seventh member of the Senate who won't seek re-election this fall. Worth said he's had it with government gridlock. The president shirks his duty to lead. The Congress is stymied by relentless and pointless maneuvering for short-term political advantage. Meantime, in a society dedicated from its creation to the twin ideals of opportunity and democracy, the gap widens between rich and poor and between the governed and their government. And while Tim Worth is leaving Washington, it seems like Bill Clinton is getting closer to his hopes of getting the nomination. John Chancellor with Tom commentary tonight, John. Here are 16 reasons for taking Governor Bill Clinton seriously. They are Georgia, South Carolina, Tennessee, Oklahoma, Florida, Texas, Mississippi, Louisiana, Illinois, Michigan, Wisconsin, Kansas, New York, Wyoming, Missouri, and Hawaii. Places where Clinton has won presidential primaries and caucuses. The Democrats probably won't win them all next November, but they add up to 80% of the electoral votes needed to win the White House. Clinton has had a huge amount of mud slung at him, but that hasn't bothered the voters. More than 5 million people have voted for Clinton, more than for Jerry Brown or Paul Songas combined. He has run an astonishingly effective campaign against serious enemies. They say Clinton is a slick hillbilly con man, but when he stumbles, they say he's fatally accident prone which is wanting it both ways. Some of his enemies wanted Senator Lloyd Benson or Congressman Dick Gephardt to be the presidential nominee. You can imagine what the Bush campaign would have done to either of these charter members of the despised and disgraced U.S. Congress. The Bush campaign is going to attack any Democratic presidential candidate this fall, but Clinton's armor seems to be quite thick. He has a remarkable ability, an eerie ability, to recover from personal attacks. That would help in the fall campaign. Given Bill Clinton's performance so far this year, maybe it's time to Democrats, for Democrats to look at his strengths instead of his weaknesses. He's earned it. He's done awfully well so far. Tom? Thank you, John. Back in a moment with a big burden of debt for a big education.
Chrysler Fifth Avenue at $22,000, the perfect balance between self-indulgence and common sense. Now get $1,500 cash back on Chrysler Fifth Avenue. Forget about one size fits all as a marketing strategy. Today you have to make each customer feel unique. At ACMT we have a range of calling plans that match the way small companies do business. In 1978 I created my first racing wheelchair. Today I make it for people all over the world. Probably 99% of my business is done long distance. AT&T created ProWatts for businesses that depend on long distance. The more you call, the higher the discount. We're based in Oakland, but we do a lot of business with L.A. and Seattle. at and small business option area code plan gives an automatic 10% discount on the one or two area codes they call most. We sell toys from all over the world. We call Russia, Hungary, China. We're working now out of three locations just to fill the demand. For small businesses that have grown to more than one location, our custom that plan combines their long distance bills for the maximum possible discount. Rule number one is know the customer, and I would say rule number two is know the customer as well. We can make a difference. AT&T, call us. This plant is in trouble. Maybe so are you. Because what will you do? And how will you do it? With the one who guides you every step of the way. Ortho. It's our nature to help. Tonight's Daily Difference in the 90s. Congratulations, you're now a lawyer or a doctor or a PhD. Now the bad news. Your education costs so much, you'll be broke for 10 years. I'm going to do, I'm going to ask you some questions about the accident. San Antonio lawyer Rick Rayner prepares to take an auto accident case to trial. He's just out of law school and he is $90,000 in debt. For a resident, Sherry Clayton, the education tab has reached $140,000. And for a third-year medical student, Eric Gunderson, his education loan is already $40,000 and growing. For most, it is a struggle. And for many, paying off the debt determines what jobs and careers they choose. Two years ago, Rick Rayner graduated from Georgetown University Law School in Washington, D.C. Hi, Mom. How are you doing? His dream was to come back to the Hispanic community and practice public interest law. But Reina says he can't because he has to make money to pay off his student loans. My loan repayment obligations are about $1,000 a month, which is pretty substantial. And when I make my final payment in 26 years, I will end up paying $199,000. So Reyna is now a corporate lawyer. Ms. Chapa, have you ever given a deposition before? Practicing in the Hispanic community is a dream deferred, but he realizes it probably will become a dream abandoned. The more money you make, the more comfortable you get, and it becomes more and more difficult with each passing year to say, okay, I'm going to pass all of this up. That's yet another dilemma that I'm going to face. That is the same dilemma facing medical students like Eric Gunderson. Okay, good. Thank you. He's in a training program with doctors at this inner city Milwaukee clinic, which serves the poor. It's the kind of medicine Gunderson would like to practice after he graduates, but he doesn't think that he can afford to. I'm going to take a listen to your heart. I'm going to ask you to breathe and then... Gunderson says that rising tuitions and loan yeah, debts are shirt. hurting the medical okay, profession. Right. There's a need to pay back your debt, so it pushes people into higher paying specialties. That's what's happening to Sherry Clayton, chief resident at Westchester County Medical Center in New York. I'm Dr. Clayton. I'm she wanted to practice general medicine in her hometown, but she's going to specialize in the more lucrative area of cardiology. Even so, okay, well, Clayton will struggle to pay off her loans. It cost me $140,000. That's the amount I had to borrow. Um, when I pay that all back with interest over 20 years, it will be $501,000. We're looking at about $2,500 a month in total. Tony Sozo, New York Medical College financial aid director, is Clayton's debt counselor. I'm seeing a trend where the costs really are outpacing 
the average salaries, uh, that, that, or at least early salaries, in one's professional life. Hello, These are my friends and colleagues. <laughs> Sozo and other college financial aid directors have lobbied members of Congress for reforms in federal student loan programs. Representative Nita Lowy of New York has sponsored a bill that would link loan repayment to income. We give them several options. We're paying over 30 years, uh, paying small amounts at the beginning, increasing that amount later on. But despite her debt situation, Sherry Clayton says she would do it all again. I love patients. I'm with them 80, 100 hours a week. I love them. I wouldn't do anything else. Um, but the debt, the loans are scary. Very scary. To the class of 1992, welcome to your world. That's night Nightly News for this Wednesday night. I'm Tom Broca. I'll be off for a few days, so I'll see you again on Monday. Coming up from your 24-hour news source. An effort to crack down on gay bashing in Des Moines. I'm Kathy Saltero. I'll have details coming up. He's one of the greatest tennis players in history. Tonight, Arthur Ashe says he has the AIDS virus. And a 10-year-old Indianola boy, the victim of a drive-by shooting. His father wants justice. Gary says keep your umbrella handy tonight. And Rick with Cyclone Football, all just ahead. My hair conditioner. It's out there purring like a kitten. Think solid as a rock. Never think about it. The best time to think about your air conditioning is now. So call your carrier dealer today. We're the guys who know best when it comes to making it better inside. Clark Peterson has details on carrier and Iowa power rebates of up to $800 on qualifying air conditioners and heat pumps. Call Clark Peterson Company today. For a complete rundown of today's TV 13 programming, call the InTouch hotline at 246-5600, category 1013. It takes a real expert to be a Midas suspension technician, but it doesn't take one to recognize our great suspension deal. Now buy one Shocker Strut, get the second for 50% off. Make good hot meals fast and easy with help and savings from Hy-Vee. This week, Dubuque Jumbo Franks, only 66 cents. Prego spaghetti sauce, just $1.49. Blue Bonnet stick margarine, 47 cents. Giorgio mushrooms, just 48 cents. And remember, pick up your Ficino stoneware. Save time and money. Shop the weekly specials at High V. And low prices. In every Have your picture taken with the Easter Bunny at Haymarket Mall. Spring and Easter shopping is picture perfect at Haymarket Mall and Haymarket Square. Merle Hay Road and Aurora. Live from WHO TV 13, where the news comes first 24 hours a day. John Bachman, Kim Kerrigan, Rick Silvestrini with sports, and meteorologist Gary Amble with the weather. This is News Center 13 at 6. This Des Moines man says he was the victim of gay bashing. Richard Sanders' swollen nose the result of his attack. The gay community says he's not alone. Good evening. The gay and lesbian community says last week's attack was not an isolated incident. In fact, it's becoming more frequent. And today, Des Moines police announced a combined effort to crack down on gay bashing. It's a program aimed to educate and prosecute. It includes helping the gay and lesbian community understand what their rights are as victims of gay bashing. A police liaison will be appointed to work with the gay and lesbian community to report hate crimes. And authorities say they will actively investigate and prosecute any charges of assault on the gay community. News Center 13's Kathy Soltero joins us from the newsroom with more details. Well, John, the Des Moines gay and lesbian community says this is a step in the right direction. They fear that as we head into the summer months, the problem could get out of control. There's a feel that it, there is an increase but we see this as an, an opportunity to do something about acts of violence and uh, we're happy to take those steps to eliminate. Des Moines police and members of the local gay and lesbian community fear gay bashing is on the rise and with the summer months ahead they fear it could get even worse. You know, we don't want to see a summer of hate. We want to see uh, the, the issues of violence addressed before they begin to increase as they have for the last several years. Just last week, a Des Moines man said he was the victim of a gay bashing when he left this local entertainment spot. Richard Sanders says he was more emotionally traumatized than physically hurt by his attackers. My, you know, nose is bruised and swollen, my face is swollen, but yeah, more, I was more emotionally traumatized. 
Sanders says after his experience, he's glad to see the community is pulling together in hopes this may never happen again. Hopefully through uh, their union, um, they'll be able to reduce the um, hate crimes for the summer since they do increase. Police say it has been hard to have any numbers on how many assaults in Des Moines may be gay related. Part of this plan is to encourage the gay community to report any instance of abuse. John and Kim. Okay, thank you very much, Kathy. Solidarity for the gay and lesbian community moves from police headquarters to the dance floor tonight. New Senate 13's Therese Thompson is at the Z International Dance Club with a preview. Therese, what are they planning for this evening? Well, Kim, it's a group of AIMS students and some of the people from Queer Nation and also the Gay and Lesbian Resource Center say they will take part in a dance-in here at Z International tonight. What they want to do, they say, is something positive. They, want, they have been doing a lot of protests on various things lately, but this time they say they want to do something to show that they can all get along with all types of people. Now that dance will get underway here at the International at 9.30 tonight, and we'll have much more on that story and tonight at 10. All right, thank you, Therese, very much. Mm -hmm. Well, in case you missed NBC Nightly News, a bombshell announcement from an American tennis legend rocking the sports world today. With flashbulbs popping, an emotional Arthur Ashe stood behind a bank of microphones and told reporters that he has the AIDS virus. Ashe says that he contracted the AIDS virus from a blood transfusion during a heart operation nine years ago. At the Blood Center of Central Iowa, they say a case like that of Arthur Ashe is unfortunate, but not a cause for panic. They have extensive questioning and testing that takes place before the blood is allowed to be used. And the Blood Center claims since testing began in 1985, not a single HIV-tainted unit has slipped through their scrutiny. The threat of AIDS is still a great concern here in Iowa. During the last three years, Polk County health officials have seen a steady increase in the number of AIDS tests requested. And while the number of tests performed is on the rise, the number of tests coming back positive is on the decrease. 40 in 1989, 38 in 1990, and 15 in 1991. Was it an accident or a drive-by shooting? That's the question the Warren County attorney is trying to answer tonight. Earlier this week, a 10-year-old Indianola boy was shot in the face with a pellet gun while riding home on his bicycle. While doctors try and save his sight, the victim's father is trying to make sure justice is done. Scott Pope reports. But we will notify the police and let her tell them. Thank okay? you very much. Thank you. Steve Blair is on a mission, trying to piece together the facts of a drive-by shooting that nearly blinded his son, Steve Jr. Stephen Blair was riding his bicycle home from school Monday afternoon down this sidewalk. When he got in front of this church, witnesses say a car full of boys pulled up in the street and yelled, Hey, kid! When Stephen looked up, they shot him. The pellet hit Steve in the tear gland of his left eye. The pellet is still there, lodged behind his eyeball. This wasn't an uh, attempt to maim. This was an attempt to kill. This was, as far as I'm concerned, attempted murder with the intent to commit murder. That same afternoon, two young girls who attend the same school were also shot with a pellet gun a few blocks away. Their injuries were not serious, but the shootings have sparked fear among their classmates. From here to home is supposed to be a safe place. 